We still have this huge and powerful storm still coming to the south and the southeast today and tomorrow, bringing tornadoes, potential hurricane force winds, still affecting upper Midwest and Northwest, while we still have in our tropics still waking up for the rest of November. So please pay attention because there is a lot going on. Good morning, everybody. Mark again in here with Man Plus. I'm going to give you the updates on what's going on with this system. Right now, you're getting these storms in Texas, and this is going to be all day growing even more severe throughout the evening. You're still getting these storms in the northeast. will accumulate just some rainfall. Why are you still getting the rain in the northwest? Is hopefully still helping you with your fire threat. Now, in the upper Midwest, you're getting freezing rain, sleet, snowstorms. You get a little bit of everything, and you're getting some hail right now in these storms, half an inch of hail passing through northern Minnesota. So this is still bringing a lot of potential severe weather throughout the day. But what's going to happen today in the south is going to turn extreme. And you can see all the setup on the 500 millibar vorticity. And I'm still showing that it's still going to the south central with some severe weather. There is another one coming Friday, but I'm showing it's still going to be a lot weaker. But this strong setup is going to bring damaging winds as well as tornadoes in the south. And it is going to go to the southeast, the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and Ohio Valley as the hours and days come along. While we still get something brewing up in the Atlantic, we have one that's forming up, still showing that it's not going to do much while we get this next system in the south on Friday. And I'm still showing we're going to have this next one still form up in the Caribbean, and it is moving further to the west. And you can see for the rest of the day, high resolution rapid refresh, that you are getting a lot of snow, sleet, storms in the upper Midwest, still getting your rain in the northwest. But in the South Central, you're going to start getting squall lines as the day continues. All afternoon long, all day long, getting a lot of chances for tornadoes. But as you go into this evening, this is where it's really going to start ramping up. You're getting all these storms coming to the central U.S. While you're getting another squall line in Texas, and it's going to brew up all night long into the overnight hours. Go into the deep south for tomorrow, bring in severe weather for tomorrow, chances for tornadoes as well while all these storms goes towards Ohio Valley for tomorrow. So this is still an extreme pattern, and we still need to watch out for what's going to happen with our tropics, because that is starting to wake up. Now, this is still bringing some flash flooding to well-needed areas. We have a big drought in this area, so you do have marginal and slight risk for flash flooding today. And for tomorrow, it was still going to move a little more east and north with a marginal for flash flooding. Anywhere from one to three inches is expected. And that's what National Weather Service has for the next two and a half days. So you still have one to two inches still coming from Washington and Oregon. A lot of this is gonna be in the higher elevations, but all this is one inches in the yellow and you have up to two inches in all this red for the next two and a half days. And this is exactly where we have a drought, so it is well needed. Just watch out for the flash flooding. Maybe an inch for New Mexico, three to five inches for the upper Midwest, but the higher elevations is not showing that much snowfall, but there is some more coming down still for the next 48 hours. Now the winds is what's going to really pick up for today. You still have widespread 40, high 40 miles per hour wind gusts and all of this green and bright green as well as some 50s that are still around for this system as it comes through. But as you look for Texas, you can see that you're getting 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts with the severe weather today. But as you go later tonight, overnight until tomorrow morning when you have that squall line, it could bring 60, even up to 70 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this system as it goes up on that ridge towards Ohio Valley. So just be warned, you do have a lot of high winds coming through Texas for today, and it will carry on to the east with some 40 and possibly 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming with it as well. So you still have your outlook for severe weather for today. You do have chances for wind, 15% chance in all this yellow and a 5% in the brown. You have chances for hail, but you do have a escalated tornado threat for today. You have the 2% in the green and the 5% in the brown for today. So the 5% tornado chance today is Houston, Texas, College Station, Texas, Sugarland, Texas, the Woodlands, Texas, and Missouri City, Texas. The 2% also includes San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, Shreveport, Louisiana, Pasadena, Texas, and Waco, Texas. And you can see this on the overall pattern setup from National Weather Service. The yard getting some severe thunderstorms in the yellow. You're getting some heavy flash flooding and heavy rain possible in this red today. You are getting mixed precipitation in all this blue. 
Snow in the white, but some heavy snow in the higher elevations in this gray. And that is for today. Now, tomorrow, this is going to shift to the deep south, and you still have your tornado threat. You still have chances for wind. You have a big 15% chance in this yellow, 5% in the brown. You have chances for hail as well, but your tornado threat has escalated also for tomorrow. So you have 2% in the green and 5% in this brown for tornadoes for Tuesday. 5% is Jackson, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Meridian, Mississippi, and Pearl, Mississippi. The 2% also includes Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama, and Gulfport, Mississippi. So here's the overall setup for tomorrow for National Weather Service for Tuesday. You do have severe thunderstorms in this yellow, and you're getting snow in this white right here, but you get mixed precipitation in all this blue with some more rainfall coming to the northwest. But what's going to make this really extreme today is going to be your winds. So what you have is your jet stream dipping in plus your subtropical jet. All this coming together as one is going to bring this high winds towards Texas today and the southeast as it goes up towards Tennessee and Kentucky and the Ohio Valley. So this is going to bring a lot of winds because of this extreme setup. And you can see with your lower level winds that this is bringing a lot of strong winds. Very much chances for squall lines and chances for tornadoes for today for Texas. And it will grow into tomorrow for the southeast. So this is bringing a lot of chances not only for severe weather, also for tornadoes that you need to be aware of. But with the winds coming in and all this moisture coming in through the south is what's going to bring y'all extreme setup for the severe weather. And it is showing a lot of squall lines, especially overnight for Texas and going towards Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi for tomorrow. So you did have storms overnight all night long, but you see right when you get around 7, 8 o'clock this morning that you are getting these thunderstorms that are starting to brew up. And once you get around noontime, then you got some damaging winds coming in with the squall line. And this is not the big squall line. This big squall line will be later today. But this will affect Oklahoma City and Dallas as well. But as you go later on this evening, after all these storms start moving through the central U.S., bringing everybody else some rainfall, you're going to get another squall line popping up later tonight for Texas. And this is going to bring some damaging winds that's bringing those high 70s potential for y'all. And it's going to go all night long through Texas, go to Arkansas, Louisiana early in the morning, bringing a lot of storms. And it will be hitting by tomorrow morning a lot more of an area because so far it's looking like it is going to drag on all day for tomorrow as well all this is going up towards the tennessee kentucky valley ohio valley while you're getting this nasty squall line in the south and this is bringing storms to ohio valley for tuesday as well and it is going to carry into wednesday as this moves a little bit further to the east. But this is going to start early in the morning for the deep south for tomorrow as well. Arkansas, Louisiana, you're getting a nasty squall line early in the morning. And as it scoots off, it goes a little further to the north. So while everybody is still getting these nasty storms through the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, Ohio Valley, the severe weather in the south is going to be nasty, but it's slowly moving further and further to the north. But it is a nasty front line, and it is bringing a lot of potential damage and winds. You can see the bowing out in it. So tomorrow looks like it's going to be severe weather as well with your chances for tornadoes with this front line. So please be aware. It's not just for today. It's also for tomorrow. And it is bringing your hail. So you can see with your lightning strikes for today, you do have a lot of lightning strikes all morning long. But once you get to the afternoon, then you get this white. This is for Dallas as well. This white is indicative to very large hail that is coming down. And as it goes into that squall line later tonight, overnight hours, you still get some chances for large hail, especially for southern Texas, as this moves through overnight into tomorrow for the deep south. But as you can see, your overall setup from National Weather Service for Wednesday. So it's just going to move towards the northeast, bringing some rainfall, some possible thunderstorms in this green for the mid-Atlantic. And you're still getting a lot of mixed precipitation in the northwest and some chances for some snow for Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, as well as a little bit of Utah. The National Hurricane Center does have another one on radar. I'm still showing is no big threats yet. The one that we need to think about is coming after this, guys. 
So this one up here in Atlantic is going down to 10%. It's literally going to fuse out as well as this new one, Disturbance 2. It is 20% in the next five days. Now all the models, every single one of them is showing that this is just going to strengthen up a little bit. It could be some kind of threat towards Bahamas, maybe some winds, maybe some rainfall. I will update you. It's still a little too far to be sure. So far it's just showing it just fuses out right here because all these cold fronts will keep it at bay. But you can also see from National Hurricane Center in 72 hours, you are expecting a surface low to form out of that. While we get this next tropical wave going through the Eastern Caribbean. And I'm still showing Global Tropics is still expecting from October 26th all the way through to November 1st for that tropical wave to form up into something into the Caribbean. And you can see the overall setup. So as you have this very strong storm still strengthening up going towards the upper Midwest, still bringing that severe weather in the south. And you can see how you get a surface low building up for the south a strengthening low as it moves towards the upper Midwest and goes towards Ohio Valley. While literally in 72 hours, we're gonna have this surface low forming up just like National Hurricane Center is seeing. But right after that, literally two or three days later, you see how that one just sits there and spins. But we get that next one, that next tropical wave does still build up and it does still strengthen up very strong and move to the West. So we definitely have to keep our eye on the tropics. Now, so far, when you look at your Arctic Oscillation, GFS is still showing in the model data that this will be pushed as it reaches maybe Jamaica, maybe the Bahamas and Cuba, and keep it to the east because of these cold fronts. But you can see right in the beginning of November, that cold front that it showed previously, it took it away. So it's still, it's still a little too far to be sure if this cold front is going to block it. That's usually what happens is we get all this hurricane repellent for the U.S., but this is still going to affect a lot of people, even if it don't make it to the lower 48. So we do need to keep this on track. Because the last thing we need is a late season pop-up that is going to be devastating. So let's stay ahead of this. Even when you look through the ensembles to see what could happen. But as you follow the control member, that's this one right here. You can see in four days, you do get an upper level low forming out of that first one. But that second wave, as it pushes through... It's saying it more likely will form up, go towards Central America, get swung around this high pressure. See how the high pressure retracts back to the east, and that will swing this system right up around this high pressure. And that is exactly what it shows in this ensemble run, the controlled member, that it will form up something strong and go right across Jamaica, Cuba, maybe even the Bahamas. And you can also see on the 6Z, the updated run, that by the time we go into Friday, that the south does get that second storm. And you can see how much weaker it is than what you're getting now. While we get the surface low in the Atlantic, and that system, you can see how weak it is going across Texas. It's not going to be a repeat of what y'all getting today. This is going to be a lot weaker. But as that forms up in the Atlantic, it just sits there and stalls for a bit while we're still getting this wave forming up in the eastern Caribbean and going to the west and strengthen up very strong. And we could get a second one coming out of that. So we definitely need to keep a watch on our tropics because our hurricane season is not over. Because I'm still showing that we have a very strong anomaly, some very favorable environment all the way from November 5th, all the way to November 10th, for something to grow and that's right when this tropical wave is growing and that is the overall setup everybody i didn't want to take up too much of your time hope you have a very blessed and a very happy monday whether you're going to school going to work i wish you the best day god bless every single one of you now today i want to read to you psalm 122 i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord our feet shall stand within thy gates o jerusalem Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. <laughs> Have a very blessed day, everybody. God bless you and your families. 
all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he bless you and keep you all in safety. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.